I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 29th of September, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we had one of our viewers, or actually a family of our viewers who lives in Calgary, Canada, uh, contacted me actually quite some time ago and said that they have a home here in the city and that maybe I'd be interested in showing it off. They have a classic uh, inner city home in the barrio of Saragossa. And of course I said that would be fantastic, but we didn't manage to make contact at the time that he was here, but we did keep in contact and his brother was here. And so we got invited to go out to Saragossa this week and record actually two houses uh, just north of La Colonia. So today we're gonna be doing a house tour of a very large, very interesting house right in downtown Zaragoza. So we're gonna get to that right after the bump. into actually showing the house today. We're gonna start by explaining Saragossa. So this is one of the core barrios of the city of Leon here in Nicaragua. Leon being the second largest city, Saragossa, La Borio, and Guadalupe being the three most important core barrios. These are the three that border the city to the west, the southwest, and the south. There are barrios to the east, northeast, and north, but none of them are the size and scale and importance of these three. These are the old barrios. These are the barrios that made the city. And you may hear me talk about the Barrio Sutiava quite often. That is the, the barrio that technically borders the city all the way to the west, but it actually lies beyond La Borio and Saragossa. And while it's very large, very important, it's actually kind of like a binary city with Leon rather than being a barrio necessarily on its own right. It's a little bit different, but it's definitely farther away. It's not in the Leon core. Guadalupe, Saragossa, and La Borio are very important in that they are really very much attached to the center of the city. If you live in any of those barrios, you feel like you're right in the middle of the city. You don't feel like you're in a different place. You don't feel apart in any way. So they're very important historically and culturally. So Saragossa lies to the west and north of Ruben Dario or the Calle Real, which is the main east-west road, also known once it leaves town as the Ponaloya Road. So we're gonna bring up a map right now and show you Saragossa and where we are in Saragossa, just north of La Colonia. La Colonia is the big supermarket for the area, so everybody uses it as a landmark because everybody, both locals and extra heroes, foreigners, um, use La Colonia. It is the main supermarket on the west part of the city. There's also a La Union downtown, which is not that far away, but it's far enough into the middle of the city that it becomes a lot more effort to go to if you live on the west side of the city. So if you're coming from the beaches or whatever, La Colonia is much more popular. So this zone, gives you a very strong city feeling. Anywhere in the three core barrios, you're gonna feel like you're in the city of Leon and you would refer to it that way. A lot of the people who live in these barrios are not completely sure which barrio they live in because they're so much just Leon city, right? Everything's under the Leon Alcadia. You, you really identify as Leonesa. So this is very much city living, but Saragossa is pretty nice in that its cost of living is quite low. Labo Rio is much more expensive in my experience than Saragossa. So Saragossa can be a really nice place if you're looking for downtown living, but want to be able to save a little bit. El Centro is by far the most expensive of the areas around. You pay the most per square foot to be in that zone. And El Centro qualifies as the touristy zone. As soon as you're in one of the barrios, even if it's just across the street, the prices drop and you're no longer considered to be in a tourist zone. With the obvious exception that uh, Ruben Dario, the highway running west out of the city, the whole length of that road is a little bit touristy no matter what you do, just because you have to travel on that to come to and from the city and to and from the beach. So Saragossa is quite popular for people who are looking to be downtown on a reasonable budget. It's still gonna be a bit more expensive than a lot of places because you are still in the middle of the city, but it's certainly affordable if you shop around a little bit. So you're gonna see just how much you can get for your money in a old school, essentially mansion, located in a really desirable part of Saragossa. Saragossa, like other parts of the city, also has a lot of private education, which is popular in Leon. Uh, so a lot of people are here because of the schools. 
Zaragoza does have quite a number of restaurants and shops and things like that. Like it's still in a part of the city close enough to the center that it has shops to service people who are coming in from outside as opposed to farther afield barrios that only have enough shops to service their own people. In Zaragoza, you're still gonna find a lot of clothing shops, for example, some of the big pizza restaurants, things that you see on the show quite often are in Saragossa, but the most expensive places are most likely gonna be in El Centro. It's rare that something really fancy or uh, really super popular is gonna be in like a Saragossa, but it can happen. In former episodes, we did a complete walk around of Saragossa one time. It was a nearly two hour episode. And we walked everywhere in, in the entire barrio. So if you wanna really get a feel for that, including seeing this house as I walk by, go watch that episode. I'll do my best to link it. I'll probably forget, but it's easy to find. Just search on Saragossa on the channel. Uh, and that and a few other walks there will come up. I've done Saragossa quite a few times. And I used to live in La Barrio. So Saragossa was just three blocks north of where I lived when I was there. So you saw quite a bit of it when I was living down there that I would use it all the time. And a lot of things that we do on a regular basis are in or near Saragossa. If we're going to say, for example, Food Rock Avenue, that's just one block east of Saragossa on one of the main roads. If we go to El Convento, which is one of the most fancy restaurants and hotels in town. That is the very, very last building on the west edge of El Centro. As you look out the driveway of El Convento, you're looking at the very first buildings of Saragossa on the other side of the street. So the parking for El Convento is in Saragossa, even though El Convento itself is in El Centro. So that gives you a little bit of a feeling of exactly what we're looking at. But without further ado, let's go onto the street and go take a look at this house. All right, we're out in Saragossa today, and about a year ago, maybe more, uh, we did some tours and we came through the street and showed some of the houses. You may recognize some of them here, and I specifically talked about this one. Well, it turns out that the owners of this house, who actually grew up in it, uh, is a fan of the channel and watches from abroad and uh, invited us to come down and get a tour of the house. So it's funny that uh, I didn't just walk past it and they didn't just see it on the show. I actually made a comment uh, that this was uh, a house that I really wanted to to see the inside of because it looks so interesting. So it's this kind of blue or turquoise. Remember, I'm colorblind, so I can't tell you for sure. Uh, house behind me. Um, that's, uh, we're just in Saragossa, just north of La Colonia. So if you see stuff on the show uh, about the grocery store, that's, that's really where we are. Uh, and this is a pretty well-known half block here. So it's one of the very few that go in between the blocks. We're gonna actually see two houses here, both of which I mentioned on the channel. So very cool that we're getting to do this. And uh, so I'm just kind of giving you the lay of the land as far as the street here, but we're gonna head right in. We're gonna start at the garage. Um, and I'm told the house used to be, uh, for a while, used as a restaurant. So some of it's set up a little bit weird because of that. Uh, and now it is being uh, reconverted back into a house and is actually available maybe for sale if someone is interested in it, but they haven't decided yet. They may be uh, simply fixing it up to stay. So if it's something you're interested in, certainly inquire, but it's a beautiful space really interesting. We're in the middle of the city. So this is Saragossa. This is the northwest corner of El Centro. So we're not in El Centro. This is the barrio, but it is one of the very, very central ones, much like uh, Labo Rio or Guadalupe. So you're very close to the middle of the city, very easy to get around. So we're just going to turn the camera around and head in through the garage. The garage is only open as a door. And some of the house is pretty dark. Remember, a lot of Nicaraguan houses, lots of lots of dark wood is popular, so it's hard to see. We're gonna do our best. We're on the GoPro 12. We've got the HDR on. Hopefully, we're gonna be able to see quite a bit. So let's spin it around. Let's go take a tour. We're entering the garage here. We covered up the license plate. And this is a beautiful, big, open, bright space. Now, this is where the restaurant used to be. So this front space you could use for anything. But this was a seating area for the restaurant. Here, nice big windows out onto the street. This is a beautiful space. And not huge, but but pretty good. And, of course, that was the dog. And uh, where the garage is, that could be used as uh, open space or just as a garage. Now, these stairs go up to what is used as a laundry area because there isn't an alternative laundry area. So this is a utility space. It looks like it's going to be something really beautiful, and it's fine, but it's laundry. Now, down below, because this was a restaurant, these are two full bathrooms that are put in. Full meaning like restaurant bathrooms, no shower. Uh, these You'd probably take these out if you're going to use this as a house, but these are being left in because what if it gets used as a business again? They're pretty good to have there. So 
A little bit of an odd setup uh, because of that. I like the open bricks here, it lets air through, but, but gives you a really strong separation. Very attractive, nicely done. Older house, remember, and this is a house that's been added on to. So you're constantly going to see things that maybe that was an outside wall originally. Um, so a lot of the design is not necessarily intentional. This is um, another like small dining room, most likely could be a sitting room. You could do a lot of different things with it uh, right off of the garage. So a lot of these open spaces, they're a little bit weird. Um, and because it's been used as a, as a restaurant for so long, this is a crying wall as they describe it in Spanish. It is a water feature wall. It's currently off. So it just looks like rocks, but apparently it like seeps water or water drips down it. So the thing, it's not exactly a waterfall, but it's a full huge water feature. And I really wish that was on because that would be really interesting and neat to see and would, would give a lot of character to the house. Um, and I don't know exactly how it works. So I'm really interested to see that running. Now on the left, I don't know what this originally was, but this was converted to be a commercial kitchen. So this is a large space meant for a lot of cooking. And that is a big open space on top. So the wind comes across and pulls the air up to keep that area cool so that you can cook a lot. Now we're going into more of what was the traditional house. I believe that the restaurant ended there. I'm not 100% sure. We have a little kind of utility hallway here. Nice built-ins. This is a bathroom here. So this is the first of the, what I believe are the actual house bathrooms, very dark. So I apologize for that, but with a shower. So clearly this was not used as part of the restaurant proper, but it probably was used as a staff room. Now we have the kind of main crux of the house here, stairs going upstairs. There's multiple stairs going upstairs, but these are the main ones. These are the ones you think of. That is a front door there. This is the thing that I would describe as the most living room or most main salon of the house. Good big open space. Notice there's air conditioning even in like the living rooms, but also big windows onto the beautiful street. So you have a lot of options here, a lot of a lot of views, a lot of air potential, but you can also close it up, run air conditioning and keep the place cold, which is important. This is a nicer house, right? Someone who has this is going to want options um, and, and you have them here and big doors that you can open up, beautiful ceilings. These are very similar to what I have, the, the same era, the same style. This is extremely Nicaraguan. This house is not a colonial. This is a house that has been fit into, uh, fitted into a colonial area. Um, so it's it's not a traditional style, but it's one that from the outside qualifies for what is required in the neighborhood. Now, this is an outdoor space. Notice that it definitely used to be an outdoor wall there. This is all caged in because you are in the middle of the city. Stairs going up to an upstairs bedroom. We're not going to go up these here, but we're going to see that bedroom in just a little bit. Uh, so we have a full second floor or not full, but a, a good size second floor on this house. And that is the secondary stairs going up there. On the left here, this door very dark. Well, first we'll kind of see, uh, on the left is the original kitchen. This is the house kitchen right here. Very good size kitchen, not huge, but very serviceable. You got room for your appliances, nice big double sink. And then this little kind of like, I guess this was like a pantry, a little space, a little utility room. You can, that opens onto the front street. Again, you get some light, you get some air. Uh, it's probably nice for the kitchen, but I'm not exactly sure the best way for that room to be used. Uh, and then this was most likely designed originally to be the formal dining room here. Again, window to the front, little cubby under the stairs, a little Harry Potter room there. That'd be for a very young Harry Potter, uh, but a good size dining space here, almost certainly where you're going to want to put it. Now, this, I believe, was originally a library, but it was converted at some point to be a downstairs master. It's not really large, but it is definitely serviceable, has uh, some built-in like kind of secret closets, air conditioned again, many of the rooms are. This has a good size bathroom. Sorry, it's very dark filming. Some of this was very difficult, um, but this is uh, not a huge bathroom, but larger than normal. That space is meant for a uh, wardrobe to be added or a large linen closet. So it's a little bit bigger than a normal bathroom, but you've got the full shower and everything in there. And then this is the walk-in closet. And this is really the thing. That's that's what the window going into the um, circular stairwell area. So if you open that up, you'd get air. But this is a huge set of built-ins. And then this is all walk-in closet. This is so much space. Really nice. And of course, you could really redesign this and get a lot more space. Those built-ins are awkward, but 
nice and big. So I'm I'm unsure how to how to really define that, but this whole uh, closet and bathroom space really is is so outsized compared to the size of this bedroom, which is just kind of a normal bedroom size, but it's got these really neat windows into the main part of the house. So depending on how you like to, to be able to open up and get air, this could be a really, really nice space there. So we're going to head up the stairs. we got to cut the video real quick to be able to do this because I had to change doors and lights and everything to do it. There we are. And uh, we're going to head up and not a ton of space upstairs, but but more than you expect because this is all added on to the house, right? And and great balcony little area here for the bedroom. So this is just bedrooms upstairs. There's no no other things. But if you're going to use this maybe as a business, then you could easily have your living quarters upstairs. Not a lot of bedrooms downstairs, as you saw. Some great views. We're looking north here. You can. It's a little bit hard with the GoPro, but those are volcanoes out there, kind of to the left. That building with the stone front facade and the second story across the street is the house we'll be looking at tomorrow. Uh, we're looking east here. Uh, so that's, there's not much to see, but it's a very attractive street, very quiet street. So that's a nice little balcony to sit out on. Cause you'll notice there aren't any balconies for sitting out on the first floor, lots of windows to be open. But if you want to sit on the street, you don't have that. This they used as a bedroom. So technically this is a bedroom space we're in, but it's also kind of a hallway. I think it works far better as a hallway. This is the upstairs master. So this is quite a big space. It's very long, lots of windows, windows into the middle of the house and a lot of windows to the outside of the house. So a lot of this is designed for, for maximized airflow. Now, it does not have a dedicated bathroom, but it has a decent bathroom here that is shared with some of the other rooms up here. So we'll turn around and we're going to head out the other door into and you'll see this is like a utility and I don't mean utility uh in in the traditional sense but a utility like a closet area shared large linens and closet space for all the upstairs rooms of course you can make it a sitting room you can do different things but three bedrooms all open onto this room so it, it kind of serves as a hallway function it's interesting uh plus the bathroom uh, opens onto it. This is the other bedroom upstairs, built-ins there. That door in front of us is the one that goes out to that circular stair going down. You can see air conditioning there as well, plus quite a bit of windows if you wanted to open up. Uh, and there the door is open and you get a lot of air from that. You can leave that open because it's that's double secured, right? It's secured to the house with a metal gate and that part of the house is secured to the outside with metal. So you have um, quite a bit of there. And then this one has its own bathroom. And this is interesting. So the bathroom's not that large, but the shower area, notice that's a tub on the left and a shower on the right. So instead of a shower going into the tub, it is a shower and a tub separate. Never seen that before. Yeah, there it is. There's the shower. There's the tub. You could, and, and then two drains, like there's so much you could do with that and so much that that's unnecessary. I have no idea why it's designed that way. But if you're, if you have someone who's disabled, that might be really useful. I'm not, I'm not really sure, um, but it's interesting to say the least. This could be used as an additional space. A lot of this could easily be reconfigured into like a master suite uh, upstairs if you didn't have kids, if you wanted to use it more in a, uh, you know, a place for just a couple to live. Um, but if you had a lot of kids that they could be upstairs, the parents could be downstairs. Like there's, there's a number of configurations that work here, but it's essentially a four bedroom house, but it is a amazingly large four bedroom house. Uh, so it's really interesting, quirky. And I mentioned this, that because this is in the middle of the city, they have to work around the space that's available and the neighboring houses and lots that are able to be acquired over time. And so the house is just really interesting. And I'm so glad we got to check this out. I hope you enjoyed the tour because this was fun. This is the outside. So that's the, the balcony we were up on. And there's Marcel in front for scale. I know the video footage was very dark. There's not a lot we can do. It's very difficult to film the inside of houses here in Nicaragua. But let me tell you, this is a truly beautiful house and has so much potential. It's a little bit unique in the way that the rooms are laid out, 
But you're always going to find that old colonial mid-city houses are going to have a lot of character. That is just a guarantee because you have to fit into the available space. You have to work with what is what, what's given to you. And so especially as uh, a lot of houses, uh, a lot of the larger houses start as one small house and then they acquire the house next to them, they acquire the house next to them, and they start moving from house to house. You have this mixture of old outside walls in the middle of your, your building. You may be taking over a courtyard. You might buy a sliver from another house here and there. And so you end up with often very unique designs. And as someone who grew up in an old farmhouse that certainly didn't acquire neighboring houses, but was added onto over the years, there was a lot of quirky go into one room, it felt like the 1900s, the next room over felt like the 1920s, go to another room, it felt like the 1960s, because that was when they were added onto the house. And you get some of the same feeling here, but you get a lot of that beautiful old uh, natural wood, the same as you see in, in my house here, uh, in this house, which makes it very difficult to film because it's super dark, but when you're in there, it's beautiful. It gives you that cigar lounge kind of feeling, right? Really dark walls. You probably want to add a lot of light. If you're not Nicaraguan, if you're Nicaraguan, you're going to be like, this is what I want. I want it dark because that's how they, that's how they live. But if you're coming from the US or Canada, very likely you're going to want to add a whole bunch of wall sconces or put all kinds of lighting in of some sort. So you get a lot, because you want to just flood the place with light to bring up the brightness because those walls are just going to absorb everything, right? But, they, but they're but they beautiful and they're classic and they're, and they're very Nicaraguan, right? So, so keeping that is really something you probably want to do, but you're going to want to probably add a lot of light to it uh, to, to change the character. But with all those unique rooms, with the double kitchens, with the number of bedrooms, with its beautiful views and great location in the middle of the city, easily walkable to everything. This house, you could walk to the grocery store, to street food, to downtown restaurants, to the Central Park, to many of the churches that we could see from above. All of that is really easily accessible from this house. So that makes this a really big draw. Of course, a house this big in the middle of the city is going to be a price premium. This is not a cookie cutter house. This is not a commodity home. Uh, so this is for someone who is looking for something unique, something that they may want to pass on to the next generation. And I think Nicaragua was really good for that stuff. In the United States, certainly we have millions of really amazing homes that you would treat as unique, but we have so many cookie cutter homes uh, that, that we just expect to turn over their commodity. You can always buy another one. You can always move to another city and get one basically the same as the one that you had, uh, more or less. And here in Nicaragua, while there are homes like that, there's also a really good number of quite unique homes that you fall in love with because it has the layout you want, the location you want, the character you want, and it just, it just feels right for you. And this is one of those homes that for the right person, I think is going to be just, just fantastic. They're going to see it and be like, that that's what I've been looking for. Uh, and for someone who is not looking for that, they're gonna be like, why? I don't, I'm not interested, right? But um, I, think, I think this has a lot of character and a lot of potential. Um, and especially as it's been used as a restaurant in the past uh, and could easily be purchased as a commercial property, it would make a good restaurant again. Uh, and the location is good as a restaurant. Not fantastic, but good. Um, and as a home, it's, it's a fantastic location for a home because it's safe, easily accessible, good street with very low traffic. So like parking and getting in and out of your garage, very easy. And, uh, uh, and of course it could be a mixed uh, structure where the bottom floor or most of the bottom floor is used as a business and the top floor is used as residential. It has very easy capability to be converted in that way, which is a popular thing here for owners or operators to live within the structure that they're running their business out of. It just makes a lot of sense. You get tax benefits and obviously you provide nighttime security to your restaurant or whatever, whatever business you have down there. If you put a computer store down there, which is not a good location for that, but if you were to do something like that with a structure like this, you know, you could live above it and, and have security cameras. You wouldn't have to necessarily hire a security guard to watch the place at night because you're there, right? So having that live in your building um, uh, thing is just really popular. It makes small businesses uh, much easier. So it's a, it's a way that Nicaraguans tend to deal with that. I hope you enjoyed the tour today. Tomorrow, we're going to be heading across the street and looking at uh, the other house that, that is connected to this one. Um, we showed that one on the previous videos as well much smaller, but it actually has a little bit more sleeping space. This house today is a much larger, much more luxurious house, really meant for someone who's looking for uh, an upscale experience uh, and wants a lot of open space, wants a lot of character, wants a lot of show off space to be, you know, really, really nice. The one we're going to see tomorrow, very nice house, but much, uh, much more modern, doesn't have this old, old styling uh, and very different design. 
quite a bit smaller, uh, much more meant for a family to be living in and actually using as a normal house. Uh, so we're gonna see that tomorrow, but it's right across the street and uh, it's exciting to be able to bring these to you. I really enjoy being able to show you what real everyday living is like here in Nicaragua. And uh, so thank you to the family who let us come in and uh, shout out to them. So we're going to answer some questions as well tomorrow just because we have some coming in and the, the tour tomorrow is going to be a lot faster than the one today. This one was such a big house that I wanted to dedicate uh, the show to it. And so like, subscribe, get down with your questions, scroll down, ask away, say hello. If you're interested in this house and you want contact of the owners, again, I'm not an agent. I'm not selling anything. I am not giving advice. I am simply showing houses and letting you guys talk about them. Uh, and, and, you know, I put up the map locations and that kind of stuff. That's, that is the end of my involvement. So if you need to be connected with anyone, uh, just let me know and, uh, share on social media, tell your friends about the show. If you'd like to support the work that we're doing here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me. It's basically like Patreon. It makes a huge difference. Really, for those of us who are showing off, uh, travel and stuff, it's kind of like our OnlyFans, right? I made that joke today. I'm like, ah, buy, buy me a coffee is like my OnlyFans. For, I could actually use OnlyFans for that. It'd be hilarious, right? Oh, you have an OnlyFans? Yes, I show Nicaragua. <laughs> laid, laid bear. And uh, uh, that does a lot to support the show. I really appreciate all the support that I get from all of you. Thank you again. I will see all the people who live in my little GoPro box tomorrow.